Welcome. So one of, the, one of the most important things from the very beginning, and this is just generally true. So this is true, let's say in all domains, is that we need to be clear on what it is that we want. Because if we're not clear on what it is that we want, then you can just observe what happens. So just as usual, this is a, an interactive process in which you have to engage, you have to participate for it to be of value to you. It's not, a, it's not passive in the way that we normally understand passivity. In truth, it's the most passive, but if I say that it's passive, you won't understand because our normal understanding of passivity is 180 degrees from the reality of it. So it's better to understand it as a, an active, engaged process. So you have to participate actively for there to be benefit. And what does that mean? It means you have to look, you have to look very, uh, sincerely for yourself at your own experience. It might seem strange, but that's really all that's asked for and all that's required. So you can see in your life, I mean, this is not hard. You can see that in anything, uh, whether we're talking about relationships, uh, business, finance, health, whatever it may be, that if you don't have clarity on what it is that you want, then you won't get what you want. Or if you do, it won't hang around because you don't have clarity about it. Now, you may think, oh, I know what I want. But here we're, we're not settling. I'm not inviting you to settle for a, a thought or an idea because those are just based on some incomplete understanding or formulation from the past. And if you look, you'll see that 99 plus percent of the time you settle for thoughts, ideas, images, these are what I call dead knowledge. It's just stuff from the past that you uh, accepted as a truth or as a, something of value. But when you look, you'll see it doesn't satisfy. So if you say, what I really want is uh, freedom. Well, wonderful. But this word freedom, it doesn't do you any good, does it? <laughs> so you don't actually want the word freedom. Now you say, oh, that's obvious. Of course, I don't want the word freedom. Well, okay, but then what is it that you actually want? And this, this is true of anything. You say, well, I want health. I want uh, abundance. I want creativity. I want joy. I want harmony. I want peace. Well, you fill in the blank with whatever word you want. And you see that the word itself is, uh, doesn't do you any good. You can repeat that word from now until you're blue in the face and it won't give you anything of real value because in and of itself, it's just that sound, it's just that word. Well, that's a little harsh. 
there's some value in it, but it's very limited. It's, its value is in pointing. So it has a vibration that points in a direction that if we accept it, then there's value there because it points to the real value. But most of the time we settle for what it is, just the, the thing itself, which is dead, it's cut off. So anything that we can grasp, anything we can turn into an object of knowledge, an object of uh, the mind, then you see it's cut off, it's isolated, it has a boundary, it has a definition, it's something. And it's dead because life is not cut off. Life is a unified whole. And then you might say, well, that sounds very uh, good and all, but what is also kind of just gobbledygook. What does that even mean? Well, you see, when we live in, when we, when we satisfy ourselves, well, not really, but when we allow ourselves to settle for these dead, this dead knowledge, this isolated, cut off objective things, these words, ideas, concepts, and memories, when we settle for these things, then we're deeply malnourished because the, um, you just see it in your own experience. There's something in you, that's why you're here. There's a longing. There's a longing and it's like, call, it's calling from within, deep within. And you don't actually know what it is. You don't know why you're here. You don't know what it is that you want, but there's something that is calling from deep within that's urging you, prompting you. Because let's face it, this is strange, isn't it? I mean, it's sort of uh, unusual at the very least. I mean, in, in terms of what the, the world tells us that we should be doing, this is not it. <laughs> So the only reason you can be here is because there's some calling from deep within and it's urging you and prompting you and uh, what is prompting you to discover is what you really want. Now, remember that this is a process you have to participate in. So I can't give you the answer. <laughs> I mean, I could give you the answer, but you see the answer would only be in words. So then you'd be right back where you started. You just have some other thing to pack away in your sack of burdens of dead knowledge that you can carry around. And then you'll feel even more exhausted, even more limited, even more restricted because it'll just be more to bind you, which is the opposite of what you want. So, Rather than give you the answer, I'm inviting you to look for yourself. And what I'm promising you is that the, you can actually discover the, the, the truth, not the dead knowledge, but the living knowledge. You can discover this directly today, now. It's not something that you have to study and have a whole lot of... Uh, bookish knowledge before you can synthesize it all and then you you know it's not like a mathematical sort of thing where you spend years on the on the chalkboard writing out the equation and then you finally solve it it's uh it's actually about taking a step back and seeing what's already plainly here it's about seeing what it is that's already obvious and it's how can it be obvious because it's yourself it's not something hidden. It's not something distant. So again, the invitation right now is to look right now. And you might not know how to look right now. That's part of the process. So it's a learning process. That might seem contradictory to what I just said. But again, it's not about learning in the way that we normally think of it. We're not trying to accumulate a whole bunch of dead things and add them up together. It's not that. It's actually, in a sense, it's the inversion of that. It's about seeing what it is that is the apparent obstacle, seeing the transparency of that, and then the direct revelation of what's already known. 
So again, it's not the actual answer is not something that can be had. It can't be grasped. It can't be packed away for a rainy day. It's something that is living now and it's living you. And when you see it, it's not like something that you've never seen before. It's something that you already know so deeply, but you overlooked it. So it's a, the revelation is it's like this aha. Oh, that's, that's who I am. I already knew it. So look right now. Even if you don't know, even if you say, I don't know how to look, that's great. That's a wonder, wonderful start. Because if you say, oh, I already know how to look, well, notice where that knowledge comes from. See, that knowledge of how to look, that's something that's already dead because it was something that happened in the past that you then turned into a thing that you could pack away and then you can pull it out as a kind of uh, defense. It's another defense. So you just see all of these obstacles are all defenses. So this gives you a clue about your actual nature. Your actual nature doesn't need any defense because anything that is a defense that it can, is an obstacle. So that can just be seen. We don't need to fight with it. So you just notice how all of these strategies, these defensive strategies, they just keep surfacing. We have so many of them and I'm not exempted from that. So I'm not sitting on a pedestal. I'm describing to you the experience that is common to us all. And I know it because of that commonality. So I'm just describing it to you so that you can also look and see. And in the seeing, it's a, an enormous relief because you don't have to go looking for it anymore. So you can start to see that everything that you thought you wanted, this is important. So look at it, you just now invite in your imagination or in your thinking or however you want this, uh, just invite everything that you thought you wanted or everything you think you want now. You think, you know, like most of us, you think, oh, I want a healthier body. I want a calmer mind. I want a better intellect. I want um, greater wit. I want um, more power in relationships. I want to be right all the time. I want to have uh, billions of dollars and an endless supply of money. I want to have uh, luxury, comfort. I want, you know, all these things, whatever you want. And, you know, maybe that's aiming too high. So you say, you know, whatever, whatever you want. It could be, you know, whatever. I want a pay raise. I want uh, somebody to stop harassing me. I want uh, my plumbing to work better. You know, whatever you want. You just see whatever you want. And then just look right now and see, okay, if I have that, now what? So just imagine that you have it and you can do this. This is the power of the imagination. That's the thing. It's so powerful. It's really um, very important. It's so often overlooked and, and dismissed, but the power of imagination used correctly is, well, used incorrectly also, but used correctly. It's tremendously powerful and a great ally. Used incorrectly, unconsciously, it just gets us further mired in the mess. But when you invite your imagination to participate, you invite the intellect to participate. Now they've got a task, they're engaged in a useful way. So you give them direction. Now imagine that you have these desires are fulfilled. So you have these things, you have whatever you want and you don't, you can take that as a, as a whole or you can take one at a time whatever works for you, but you can imagine this desire or these desires are fulfilled and just imagine what that's like. And notice, and now what? 
Am I satisfied? Am I happy? I mean, truly happy? Am I really satisfied? Am I truly happy? So, you know, if I have the billion dollars, okay, there's that initial hit, you know, the little high, you know, take a vacation, buy all the fancy things, go through whatever, you know, do whatever you're going to do to play with it. And then, but then when that's all worked out, you know, then, then what, now you've got still, let's say you've done it well and you, you've got your yayas out, but you still, and you still have a billion dollars in the bank and it's, you know, you're never going to go through it all. And, if, you know, whatever, it's, you've got a trillion dollars in the bank. You're never going to go through it all. Now what? You know, you've done all the things you're going to do with that money bought the yacht and the 10 mansions and the island and the cars and you've, oh, and you've donated enormous amounts to charity and, you know, all these things. Now what? And you see, if you really tell the truth, you got to see that you're, nothing's really fundamentally changed. still wake up you're still you same same things same stuff same discontent why notice there's a longing there's a desire that's deeper it's very deep very very it's at the core but it's it's muffled it's not as it's not as uh, pronounced as the you know i need a million dollars or i need my you know my sister to respect me or I, you know, would all these things, it, it's not like that. It's not so easily articulated in thought. It's something that we, we can't really put our finger on. And so we often just overlook it. But look now, don't overlook it because you see, when you really use the imagination, engage the imagination and the intellect in this intelligent way, you have to see none of the things that I think I want will give me what I really want because they're all uh, stand-ins. They, they're like fake flowers, you know, they look good and then, but they're not the real thing. So most people tend to be, become cynical. And they say, well, then there is nothing really, you know, that, that there is no true desire. There is no truth, period. Because it can't be grasped in the mind. It can't be known in that way. And so because we don't have that skill or we haven't cultivated it, most people become cynical and it's sour grapes, you know, it's like, oh, I guess it doesn't exist. So I'll just get by, just get by, you know, whatever I gotta do. But I'm inviting you to some, to tell a deeper truth. So you just actually know at the core of your being that that's not true. You know that there is a, well, here's a loaded term, there's a purpose to your life. And that purpose is not about what it looks like on the outside. It has very little to do with what it looks like on the outside. So you could achieve all the greatest things on the outside and everybody in, everybody could agree, oh, he's he or she is the perfect person. They're so accomplished, so worthy, so intelligent, so generous, so 
uh, intelligent and so forth. And that none of that is it. You know that none of that is it. So just look now and see what is the actual purpose of your life. Why are you here? The in immediate intuitive knowledge, the living knowledge shines forth. It has to, for an instant. I'm not suggesting that it, it filters all the way to the level of the mind or the intellect or even the imagination. But for an instant, there's a glimmer that there's something there that's known. We all know it. We all know that there's a purpose to our life and that we, and we know when we're, we know when we're aligned and we know when we're not. And we know that it's not about the outer appearance. It's not about how many things we can, you know, how long your resume is. It's not about that at all. It's not about how many people approve of you. It's not about any of those things. Nobody else could know other than you. So you see, most people are going to ignore, deny, avoid until the end. And by the end, I mean the end of this life, you know, the, the right to death, ignoring and avoiding. Because this cynicism, this cynicism gets most people. But, and it's got it, you know, it's got its hooks into all of us, but you, you not as much as maybe most. I mean, obviously, because if it did, you <laughs> You couldn't be here. <laughs> so, notice the, just notice all of the resistance, all of the armoring, all of the distraction. That's all. You just notice it. And then notice this deeper calling. See how we, we all desire for true satisfaction. We can call that whatever we want, but that's, that's, that's the answer in a sense. We, that's what we want is we want that true satisfaction, not temporary little blips, but we want something true that's known through and through as the anchored in truth, uh, immutable, eternal. We, that's what we desire. Something that's profoundly restful, which does not deny activity. So it's not uh, diminished by activity, but it's so profoundly restful that, that all activity is received by it effortlessly. That's what we want. So you look and see that you know that this is so, you know that this is what you're longing for. You know that nothing, none of these superficial things, none of the things that you grasp at will give you that ultimately. So then we're at a an important point, which is you tell the truth now and you have to recognize that your usual ways are not effective for what you really want. So this is like, you know, Buddhism 101, you, you got to empty your bowl. <laughs> We hear these things, but you see what happens? You hear it and you say, oh yeah, yeah, I know that. 
See, that's dead knowledge. I know that. But the living knowledge is not so comfortable. The living knowledge uh, is maybe actually supremely uncomfortable. And so if you're judging by how comfortable you are, I would encourage you to drop that. Because uh, what I'm really pointing out is that what you want is not, it can't be known in that way. You look and see, how do you judge what's comfortable and what's not comfortable? And clearly, it's based on past experience, past understanding. And it's entirely unique to you, your understanding of what's comfortable and somebody else's understanding of what's comfortable, they're not the same. In fact, they can be enormously different. You know, my, like my idea of uh, comfortable, I can't reconcile with so, me, so much of what I see people doing. So com comfort is, uh, can't be our guide. Does that mean we should completely ignore it? No, of course not, because as you often maybe hopefully hear me suggest, if we push, if we say, oh, now I understand the answer, I've got to just make myself uncomfortable or I've got to just endure whatever. No, that's not sustainable. So here we're talking about what you deeply desire, which is eternal and true. Well, so here's a clue. If you're having to exert a great deal of effort, that's not sustainable, that can't be eternal. What's eternal has to be effortless. It has to be what is even in the absence of what you consider to be yourself, because surely you see that what you consider to be yourself, it's not always here. So what's eternal and what's true is beyond any of these notions of ourselves, our preferences, our ideas, our, so all of that, that's, you know, at that level, we can argue all day long, all for the whole lifetime, and then for more, and you see that's, that's just what's happening. That's what's happening on this earth. A lot of disagreement at that level. And you see, so here, I, you know, I've been inviting you to look in your own life just to see like to the end of your own life span, will these things that you're engaged in uh, be truly satisfying? And you have to see no, but then we can also expand that and look and see not just one lifetime, but an incredible number of lifetimes, billions of lifetimes. And it hasn't yielded satisfaction. So there's another principle here, which is that the, the uh, mo well, it's, it's a related principle, but you see the, these ideas that we guide, the principles that we uh, often guide uses our guiding principles these are by out of habit these are based on dead knowledge they're just accumulated either in this lifetime or there we inherited them and accepted them and there's this one really core thing that is uh, most people are using and it's where mo most all of us are using is our primary guiding light, which is uh, me. Is it good for me? Do I like it? Well, now look and see what will really satisfy. So imagine now you've got, you know, all these things that you think you want and see now you've got all of them. So we're using the imagination again. I've got all of them, and now am I satisfied really, truly? No, clearly not. And look and see why that might be. See that there's still this wall 
this uh, false boundary called me. And you can fortify that and augment that and decorate it with gold and jewels. And no matter what you do, no matter how strong and no matter how beautiful, you can throw the uh, everything possible at it. You could take the entirety of the, all the abundance of the entirety of creation and use that to decorate it and fortify it so that there's nothing else left. This is the ultimate fortress and the ultimate paradise. And you'll see you're still not satisfied because you, why? Because you falsely cut yourself off. So see that we all exist in this together, this notion of me as a separate thing is entirely false. So all of these notions about I'm, I'm gonna, I have access to the answers for me is nonsense. So now we can expand and we can recognize that, that, that I am not separate from the whole. All, I mean, let's just take just the species for a moment. This person and all of humanity through all time, not separate, obviously, clearly. And you know that you cannot, you know, no man is an island. You know, you're not, you're not going to be, you're not going to find that satisfaction cut off, isolated. So here we look at the uh, result of billions of lifetimes and what is it yielded thus far? We know it's not satisfaction, not true satisfaction. We know that that's true, that the inner and the outer are one. And as we can see, that that's shown to us. It's clearly reflected. I'm not satisfied. The world's not satisfied. Humanity isn't satisfied. <laughs> so there's an in, so the invitation at every step is it gets louder and louder and more pinched and crowded and uncomfortable and frightening is it's it's actually calling to us saying look look here look here look here we're looking everywhere else but remember this is an interactive process so you look here now where is here yourself so all of this looking we're seeing all the obstacles we're seeing everything that's not that satisfaction so have you found the satisfaction yet in your mind have you done that so we're looking you're looking for the satisfaction you're looking for it where will i find it what will give that to me it's not going to be money it's not going to be sex it's not going to be fame it's not going to be power it's not going to be philanthropy it's not going to be uh knowledge it's not going to be any any of these things you just have to see that so we're looking everywhere God, desperately where is it where is it where am i going to find it and we don't usually want to look in this way with this kind of uh honesty because then what we run up against is this desperation and then our all of our last ditch strategies come out depression anger rage anxiety. But just see those. So hopefully, you know, here the purpose is to point, to invite and provoke. Because without the provocation, we stop short, we, we settle. We settle for that cynicism that says, yeah, okay. All right. But I guess there's no, I guess the point is there's no real truth. That's what, that's what the cynical perspective resolves. 
But see, that's a last defense. That's to keep you from this deeper desperation. Allow yourself to go there. That there's nothing that you're going to do or figure out or get or achieve or fix that will give you what you really want. So now, another important point is, because, and I make this point because you see what the mind will do, the mind will say, okay, well, then the truth must be the inversion of that as understood by the mind, thereby, uh, since everything that I was doing wasn't working, I'll just do the opposite of that. So I'm gonna give away everything and I'm gonna uh, stop talking and I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to abandon my family and yada, yada, yada. No, or uh, even further, you know, I'll reject all desire. Uh, and, and, and you might laugh at this, but this is, this happens, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I'm, well, sex is the problem. I'm going to give up sex. Uh, money is the problem. I'm going to give up money. Uh, my, a name is a problem. I'll give it my name. <laughs> so don't fall for that trap either. Just see what's it being, what's happening is, is we pull away through seeing just by seeing we see not that's not it 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 so now why wh why are you here hopefully it's clearer now that you where you tend to look is you're not going to find the answer there so stop looking there just don't look there because you see when you look there you either settle for a dead answer or you um, get caught up in these, these uh, strategies. And instead, you can just see that that's all that's going on there. Is that there's this, just this desperate scrambling for something, but it, it, it's not there. The answer that you want is not found where you look. Now, again, the cynical mind says, well, then there is no answer. But see, this is just what we're ha what's happening is we're coming to see the limitation of the mind. That's all. So the mind being uh, a thing in the sense that we're, we can talk about it and think about it and understand it has a limitation all things do so it has a limitation we can see the limitation now notice something about this you can see the limitation you can perceive the limitation who are you you can't be that you can't be that which is it, it, it is limited if you're seeing the limitation. You're, you can only see the limitation from beyond the limitation. So notice what is here outside of the limitation, outside of the desperation, outside of the strategies, outside of all of the usual habits. And notice it's you. <laughs> See, it's just you, it's you. But you without boundaries, without definition. So take a look right now. See that you, right now, before you think about it, but in this one instant, prior to the arising of the next thought, here you are. So who is the 
Who's the real you? <laughs> you see, we've got it mixed up usually because the when we say when we when we talk about ourselves when we're referring to ourselves we're usually referring to this image or concept which is dead something drawn from the past because you thought it in the past or somebody told you that in the past or you saw the reflection in the past But actually, right now, you see, that is just uh, some content that's floating by. That comes and goes. That's not consistent. It's not always here. But what's here always is you, the real you, the, the deeper you, the you who doesn't have a name, who doesn't have an identity, who's not bound, who's not limited, who doesn't, uh, was not born, won't die. Uh, that's, that's provocative. You try to reconcile that and you can't because you see, what it reveals is that this clinging, this habitual clinging to this self-concept or self-image, this notion of the self is, uh, it's actually irreconcilable. It can't be reconciled with the direct experience, with direct reality, with reality as it is, not as it's imagined to be. So just notice that the habit is very strong. We keep looking to the mind, keep referring, keep comparing, keep trying to grasp some dead knowledge that we can pack pack away for a rainy day so that when we're feeling insecure or uncomfortable or we need some new defense, we can pull it out and say, aha, I've got the right answer. But you've done that so many times. And again, you just see it's deeply dissatisfying. It never gives you the true satisfaction that you long for. But how do you know that? See, where does that longing arise from? And it can only arise from the reality of that which is longed for. See, the reality of what we long for, it's, we can only long for it because it's actually already known. It's not known as something in the past. It's known as something living now. But we just overlook it. Otherwise, if we didn't know that, then we wouldn't long for it. It wouldn't, couldn't uh, exist in our awareness didn't exist. So it's already here. We long for it because it's already known, but we are looking in the wrong place. So here, all we're doing is starting to look in the right way. So not to the mind, not to the past, just to recognize what it is that's already known as myself. It's not, it's not difficult, the child can do it. It's just what is known as myself already. And see that all of the, all of what we take to be ourselves, all of that is appearing in or to this, which I know myself to be prior to, during and after all of that other stuff. So whether you have a name or not, you are. So again, you have to look and see the truth of this. So it's looking right now, just seeing the reality of it and letting this remain open. This isn't about clutching at it and putting it into the mind. That's the wrong way. That will only give you more dead knowledge, which will just be a burden. So here, just remain open. So you can't, nothing here needs to be grasped. It just needs to be seen. So just see, don't grasp. You don't need to, you won't be tested on this. I mean, it's, there's not going to be, it's nothing like that. It's about the seeing. The seeing is the direct living knowledge. So you see that before you have a name, you are. Before you 
before you even have a body, you are. Now that might seem strange, but notice that actually that's true regularly. That uh, at the very least, when you first wake up in the morning, there's this self-awareness, you know that you are, and but there's no body. The body appears a short time after. The mind argues, the mind says, yeah, but the body's there. I just wasn't aware of it. Yes, that's the usual dissatisfying way of understanding, but that's all in the mind as dead knowledge. But look at the living knowledge, which is directly known. And you know, I am prior to any body. I am during the body and I am after the body. So I am before the name, before the word, before the understanding, before the body, before the perception, before the senses, before the experience, before and during and after all the arising phenomena. So notice your, your nature actually right now as is, which is nameless, formless, bodiless, mindless. And to see that actually this is continuous, always true. It's never not true. In fact, you can perhaps recognize that right now is timeless. There is no, uh, no boundary whatsoever to your true nature. There isn't you look directly and see, can you find yourself bound by time or space? No, who you are is prior to time and space. So this is a truly timeless reality. And you can see that everything, including time and space is a concept that's arising in this. The body is a concept, the world is a concept. Okay, well, great. But you might say this, I've, I've glimpsed this a dozen times or a hundred times. Maybe I've even had a sustained experience of this for 20 minutes or an hour, a week or a year, but then I keep having this experience uh, of limitation, of frustration, of difficulty, of problems. And it doesn't seem like this glimpsing of this uh, transcendent or supreme reality is uh, of any value in transforming that. Well, I, if, if you, I'm saying that, but you know, if you, if you think that, if you notice that, if you perceive that, fine, good, you're, uh, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I understand. So it's not enough just to see this, just to recognize this. It has to be lived, it has to be invited into all uh, aspects of our existence, which includes into the mind and into the body and into perception, into this world. Now, why would that be? I don't know. It's a mystery. All I can tell you is that it's clear that that's true, that so long as this, so it's like, a, it's a several, there, there's a, it's like a dance. It takes several steps in the dance. The first step is to step back. So we're mired in all of this trouble and difficulty and distress and frustration and discouragement and disappointment and all the scheming and striving and effort. And uh, we reach a point of tension. We can't go forward anymore. And 
So we have to take a step back. We take a step back. Ah, peace, rest, ease, freedom, boundlessness, formlessness. Everything is dissolved. There's nothing, there's just pure potential. There's nothing formed here. We call this whatever we call it, self, consciousness, awareness, silence. But this is the first step. So this is what we've been exploring. It's essential without this, uh, we can't do the dance, you know, I mean, you can't just have a dance of one step. It doesn't, doesn't work. <laughs> so we take this step back. But this dance is still going on. So we have something, you know, we are here to express. We're here to, uh, we're here to express. And we're here to express truthfully. We're here to express who we are. And so we take a step back and we find that even though that happens, we keep being, this dance is still happening. So we keep taking this step forward. But if we take the step forward unconsciously, then it's very slow progress, so to speak. You know, this, we keep stepping forward unconsciously right into the same same habits, same pain, same delusion, same frustration. So in this dance, we can dance consciously, we can dance awake, we can dance with a, a sense of openness, curiosity and learning. And we, when we take this step back, we see something completely radically differently. It offers us this freshness, this newness, this uh, potential, but it's up to us to exercise that because if we just are sucked back into the dance unconsciously, then we keep finding ourselves experiencing this unfulfillment. So what is this true fulfillment? The true fulfillment is first to know myself truly, to know myself as pure potential, as consciousness, as just myself, not my ideas. And then to consciously engage in the dance, to take this step forward in a conscious way. So how do we do that? Well, this is the process that I've been inviting us all to explore together and we'll explore it again now. So for step one, we take the step back. So just for an instant, you drop everything, just for an instant, just notice what's here prior to the thought, prior to the images, prior to the self-concept, prior to all of that. Just for one instant, you catch a glimpse. It's just this wide openness, pure potential, but awake, aware. And this is yourself, you just notice I am. Then the second step consciously taken is imagine now what you discover here as yourself, unmanifest, formless, wide open, pure potential. Here, there's no conflict. This is unconditional peace, wide open. So now continuing to recognize that, to be anchored here, take this step forward and imagine this expressing, this unconditional peace expressing as you individually in your mind, your body, your relationships, your home, your family, your career, your community. And here, all we're doing is just seeing whatever the objections or obstacles that are existing in the conditioning that may be there. That's it. So you're not trying to fix it. You don't need to do anything other than just see. So just continue to be open and see, see honestly. So it's not about, it's definitely not about augmenting your self-image or 
defending your self-image. So you see whatever there is to be seen. Maybe some of it is uncomfortable because some of it may be dysfunction. Some of it may be frustration. Same. Some of it may be uh, to recognize your ignorance and your bad habits. But trust in the process. It's about seeing, not judging, not condemning, not taking it personally. So our attitude here is I want to learn, I want to see. It's not about I want to be the best, I want to be powerful, I want everybody to approve of me and love me, I want to uh, achieve the greatest and so forth. It's just I humbly want to see, I want to learn. So just have that attitude and then just see whatever is here as you imagine this unconditional peace expressing in your life. And then again, just let everything go. Notice prior to all of that, for this one instant, you don't have to hold on to anything, but just right here, completely at rest without any effort is this wide openness, no defenses, no boundaries, no limitations, no warfare. And so this is unconditional peace, directly known at its source. And then imagine this unconditional peace expressing, individuating in your body, your mind, your life, your relationships, your community. It's not about trying to get it right. It's about just being anchored in that fundamental reality of unconditional peace and then seeing in you, as you imagine that expressing whatever seems to be in the way, whatever habits, whatever's in the conditioning, whatever ways of perceiving that are obstacles. So it could be a thought, it could be an image, it could be a memory, it could be a sensation, it could be a belief, it could be anything that occurs. You just are witness to it without any judgment, without trying to fix it, without trying to defend it, just to see it with this attitude of, I, I'm here to learn. I'm here to express truthfully. So then notice, without, without needing to have a particular outcome, just tell the truth about whatever you notice now. When you imagine unconditional peace expressing in your life, just notice if there's any difference. Notice if that seems somehow more possible. It doesn't have to. It's not, we're not here to, you know, there's no prize for, for that being the case. It's rather, it's just, you see, I mean, there is a prize, but the prize isn't something that's externally granted. It's received within because, because of the truthfulness, because of the sincerity, because of the willingness, that's all. So whatever your experience, you just open to that and then just notice what is it like now to be and to be expressed? Is there any new openness? Is there any new sense of potential? Is there any sense of relief or possibility? less strain, less defense. So as always, thank you for joining me. Thank you for your courage and your patience and your willingness to engage in something very unusual, challenging. And for those who are here live, we'll stay on for the Q&A. So I'll end this recording now.